Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Unity Game Programming for Beginners. Grab a bubbly, a bag of popcorn, and let's get started. In this video, we're going to be talking about for each loops in Unity. What are for each loops? Well, they're a basic loop type that you can use in C Sharp. They're fast to write, and they're simple to use, making them ideal for a variety of situations. One of my favorite things about them is they're difficult to get an error with when using. Have you ever seen your index is out of bounds when you're using a for loop? You're not going to see this with a for each loop. They're useful for when you want to do something with each variable in an array or a list. So a for each loops uses a single variable type. A for loop is always using an integer value to do its iterations, but a for each loop just cycles through each value in an array or a list. So if you need to look up each value in that array or list, this is the perfect loop type to use. However, they're not ideal for more complex situations. That's when we use for loops instead. Now, before we jump into the actual code, we're going to take a look at a for each loop example and break down exactly how each of these components work. So in this example, we're going to be looking at a private array of type integers denoted over here called lottery numbers. And I've just set some sample numbers in here, whether you not you actually want to try to play them. That's up to you. I can't make any recommendations off complete randomness. Now here's a for each loop. In this case, it the for each loop is referencing lottery numbers and its type of integer. Now, what do all these mean? Well, int is our data type and it must match the array. So we have an integer array, therefore we're declaring an integer for our for each loop. Now, my int, this is just a variable we're declaring right here. This doesn't previously exist anywhere in the script. In fact, it can't, and we can call this whatever we want. So in this case, it's just my int in is a denoted as a C sharp keyword and it's a necessary component of a for each loop. So you're always going to write the keyword in and that's just telling us that for each value of lottery numbers, we're going to do something with it. Now, when we're using a for each loop, every iteration of this loop is going to count for one of these values in lottery numbers. So the first time we loop through, my int is going to be equal to the first value in lottery numbers, which would be 15. So this would print out next lotto number is 15. And then the second loop, it would say that the next lotto number is 22, 36, 48, and so forth. That's what a for each loop is doing. It's just going through each value in this array, and it is temporarily stored in whatever variable we're declaring over here. Here's one more for each loop example. In this case, we're assuming that we have an array of weapons. And in this case, we're not using an integer. The for each loop is a reference to this script. So assume our array is of type weapon, and we could have several things in here, a pistol, a shotgun, an assault rifle, whatever it is. So weapon, in this case, is just, it's a script and it's called weapon. Again, this is a variable we are declaring. It can be called anything, but in this case, I'm just calling it weapon with a lowercase w. Again, we have the keyword in, and weapons is a list or array of weapons, as I mentioned. And now, because we're going through each weapon in this script, we can do something with it. So we're just imagining that the weapon script has a method inside it called initialize, and we're just calling that for each weapon in this array. Oh my goodness, would you look at this? We actually have a game here that's using some weapons in it. And look, weapons, pistol, rifle, shotgun. Now, if you notice over here in the, in the hierarchy, these are all active. But if I hit play, you're gonna see that only the shotgun is now active. The pistol and rifle have become inactive in the hierarchy. And that's achieved through using a for each loop. Let's take a look at what that's doing in the code. Now, just like in the example, here I've declared a private list of type weapon, and it's just named weapons with an underscore at the start, and that underscore is just a naming convention to denote that this is a private variable. If we scroll down a little bit, 
we'll see that over here we're finding all of the weapons in the scene and we're adding them to a list and then we're setting an active weapon which is in this case the shotgun that I've declared and over here we're gonna see that in order to set the active weapon the first thing I want to do is disable all of the weapons which is where our for reach loop comes into play here I'm writing for each weapon weapon in weapons I'm going to set that weapon to be inactive. Now you might notice here that I don't have these squiggly brackets. I could do the squiggly brackets and then I could put that in here. But if you're only using one line of code, you actually don't need the squiggly brackets at all. Uh, it basically just omitting the squiggly brackets it makes it only read the single line underneath. It's just, it can be a little cleaner and you can also do this with if statements for loops, basically any of these uh, types of keywords here. I want to show you another really useful way to use for each loops, and that can be to retrieve a particular variable. Now, in this case, let's say that I just wanted to find whatever the active weapon is that the player is holding. So I could write a method here, and I could call it public weapon find active weapon. And then in here, I could write again for each weapon, weapon in weapons. That's a lot of repetition of the word weapon. And you'll see that I am getting a red squiggly under here. Uh, that's because I've declared this as a public weapon and it's looking for a return type, which I haven't yet provided. Uh, so in this case, I could just say if weapon dot is active and enabled, which is basically saying if this is the weapon in the hierarchy that is not set active to be false, then this is what I'm looking for. Well, and then I could simply say return weapon. Now you'll see it's still giving me a red squiggly and that's because, well, what happens if it loops through all of the weapons and it doesn't find one, in which case it's never going to reach this if statement, in which case I would go after the for each loop and I would just say, first of all, I'm gonna debug and log an error saying, error, no active weapon found. And then I would say return null. Now, this is a good use of a for each loop because I'm going through each iteration and I'm looking for one specific variable uh, that gives me what I want. And just to test if this is working, I could go here under, uh, not under update, but under, yeah, init from load. After we set an active weapon, I could just say, find active weapon and then I could just say print weapon to test if it works let's go and test that and here I'm going to hit play it's going to start and look there it is shotgun it found the shotgun that is the active weapon that I set in the scene so we know that the for each loop is working successfully okay now I've really talked about why we use for each loops, but what about when we should not use a for each loop? What, what is the circumstance where we might not want to do that? Well, if you look here, when I shoot the shotgun, I'm shooting multiple bullets. You can see the particle effects hitting the surface. <laughs> I just died. And this is being done with a for loop, not a for each loop. Let's take a look at how this works in the code. So here's the for loop that's controlling the number of bullets that are being shot. Uh, you don't really have to understand what's going on in here, but just notice that I want this to loop a certain amount of times. So bullets per shot is basically saying we're shoot every time I click left mouse button, it's gonna fire off, you know, one bullet, two bullets, 10 bullets. And then I want it to do stuff for each of these bullets. In this case, it's processing a hit and determining whether it's a, a hit or it's a miss. Now. I'm not actually using the variable bullets per shot anywhere within this for loop. I just want it to loop as many times as this variable is set for. You know, in the, in the shotgun's case, it's 10 times. So I want this loop to run 10 times. But other than it running 10 times, I have no use for this variable bullets per shot. I'm doing completely different stuff. So a for each loop here doesn't make sense. I should use a for loop because it's a more complex situation and a for each loop just doesn't 
cut it here. It doesn't do what we need it to do. So that's basically it for for each loops. They're a fairly simple loop type. They're very useful in certain circumstances. I hope you found this video to be helpful, informative. Feel free to ask any questions. Take care.